and welcome. My name is Morgan Krepke. I will be your teacher for this art kit. So to start off, let me tell you a little bit about me. I am a local artist here in Roseburg. I primarily do comics or graphic novels and uh, graphic design. I also teach private lessons. So if you like this class and the way that I teach, um, feel free to go onto my website, which will be on the video here, and book a private lesson. We can make comics together or do basic drawing, watercolor, whatever it is that you are looking to do as a young artist. And uh, because it's a private lesson, it's personally fashioned for you as a student. So now to the project, we have our lovely art kit here. Let's open it up and take a look inside the box. So first thing that we have is our Umpqua Valley Art Association membership. So please uh, take a look at it and uh, see what the wonderful benefits there are of becoming a member and also supporting our lovely Arts Association. Okay, so next up we have a page that is all the tools you will need per project and I will explain as I go um, per video so that you know precisely what you're using and how we're going to be using it. I'll go over all that. And then after that, we have all of our tools that we will be using. So here are the drawing tools you will need to use. And so I will explain what they all are. So in this little kit, these are the brass joints. We will use them as joints. They are brass paper pins. We have two kinds of glue. So we have a precision bonding glue, and then we have our glue stick. And then we have four skewers, our watercolor, water brush, two pens, pencil, eraser, two pieces of our book boards, and some really nice scissors. Now I know these scissors are gonna be a little bit big. If they feel a little clumsy in your hands, it's okay. Um, but they will be with you for a long time. So I'm going to go over proper cutting tips and techniques for when we get into our projects here. I will go into tips and techniques for all the tools when we start the project. All right, so there are a bunch of different papers in this kit. First things you will see are two different colored tissue papers. And then I have a couple of templates. Now these are just examples. You do not have to follow exactly what I do. If you want uh, your witch to have a beard, in which case it would be a wizard, now wouldn't it? Um, go ahead and draw one on. I'll go more in depth when we get there on how to use these, but just know that if you really want a wizard or if you want more of a cape, you can design that, you have that creative freedom. These are just examples of all the pieces that you'll need to make. So we have a witch or wizard, young wizard, hence no beard yet. And then we have our dragon. Now there are um, technically seven pieces in here. You can have less pieces if you want. You can make your dragon without wings. Again, it's all up to you. These were just a sample option. And I have a key. So uh, if you know what a key is, you can ignore this part of the video. If you don't, I will explain. So a key are instructions, written instructions on how to read a map typically, but we use it also in the same way when you get into uh, making something. In this case, I have a printed sheet that has a key with written instructions on what to do with this particular piece of paper, also with the witch slash wizard. 
And then we get to our fun piece of transparency paper. Now you're gonna to wanna to be careful and not fold it, not get anything on it. So when you set up your workspace to start doing these projects, make sure this goes somewhere safe on your table where you won't splatter with your watercolors or accidentally get ink on it, all of those things, okay? So now, we're getting into the slightly more complicated. I will start with the obvious. We have in the bottom of your package, you will have two sheets of black construction paper. Now we get into all the white pages. So these are gonna be a little hard to tell apart. That is okay. I will go over this very carefully with you and again, if you need clarity later on, you forget, you can rewind and look at this again. I have two pieces of printer paper and they're the brightest white, the super, super white and very, very thin. And there are two of them. Set those aside. Then we have two pages of drawing paper. Now these are slightly thicker. They're very smooth and they're also slightly yellow. I don't know if you can tell that. If you have a hard time telling that, that's okay. You will have two pieces of identical uh, drawing paper. And the last piece is a really thick piece. So that's not your drawing paper. That is your watercolor paper. So those are our papers. All right, so our last tool that we're gonna need, in fact, is the box. We are, so don't throw this away. You'll need it. And I'll go over specifically of what parts we will be using. So yes, this is one of your tools. We are going to create our pin character. And these are the tools I have laid out here that we will be using. So that is our watercolor palette, paintbrush, both pens, now you may have a Micron pen, which is what this guy is. So it will say Micron 05, that is the pen tip width. And also what's nice about the Micron, if you do have it, it is waterproof, as I believe the AP also is. So what we're going to do is create our character. And remember it's gonna have four pin joints and that is what the brass pins are for. That will make those joints all movable. So if, again, you want something with wings, then you will use two of those brass pins to create the joint for the wing. And then you also have your scissor, eraser, pencil. So you should have all of your things. And now, I'm going to explain again about the paper. So the paper that we're using is your watercolor paper, which is the thickest paper in the kit. The other thing that may be helpful for these that aren't included in the kit, and if you don't have to have them, which is why they're not included, but if you want them and you do have them at home, then feel free to use them. One of those very handy things will actually be scotch tape because accidents happen and uh, scotch tape is a lifesaver when working with paper products. If you have it at home, again, it's not necessary, but sometimes it's nice to have, if you want a little bit more precision, our uh, rulers. I'm gonna begin creating my character and I'm probably gonna do a bit of this as a time lapse. I will pause as I get to a technique. The biggest technique to keep in mind to start with, we are going to be using pencil and eraser. Those are your first tools. Do not use the pink tip eraser on your pencil. In fact, just cut it off. I'm serious, it's, they're terrible. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna cut mine off so that I don't use it. Um, because it has a terrible habit of making your white paper pink. That's why we don't like them. So you have a nice rubber white eraser. That is what you will start using. You will begin penciling in your character. Remember to leave room for your joints. So it's just like the dragon in your packet. I have 
those head, arm, wing, they're all separate pieces. So as I begin drawing my character, let's see, first of all, I have to think of what I wanna draw. Well, Easter's coming up, sort of. Let's do a bunny. And I'm going to draw very lightly and loose. There we go. It's about the shape I want. And then I'm going to draw some ears. And again, an easy tip for drawing is think of basic shapes. So, and I actually want my ears a little bit more pointy. All right, and then I need facial features. It's kind of where I start thinking of a character. I'll begin with the face and eyes. Now you don't have to worry about making them perfectly symmetrical. Most of my things never are. All right, cute little bunny. Who is mischievous so I'm gonna have them look in the other direction so when I'm drawing the eyes I draw the basic shape where the rabbit is looking then I also start drawing reflections depending on where you are in your personal journey through art and drawing you may or may not want to do those they're just little bits that I like to add I'm going to do the inner part of the ear. Again, I'm just kind of having fun with it. So I know I'm going to cut this character out. I'm not going to put the whiskers too far out because they're very delicate when you cut something that thin. All right, so roughly there is my bunny as far as the head and ears go. So these are all attached pieces. These will not move. Same with the body, which will be a basic shape here. Okay. And then also give him her a chin and a little egg. So. Just because I can. Again, you don't have to draw anything spring related. If you wanna draw a monster octopus, you can. Just remember that there are only four joints that you can move. So only four tentacles will move, okay? All right, so I have the basic shape, all the basic parts that I want for the part of the rabbit that's not gonna move. Now, I am going to do movable front paws and I'm going to do a uh, movable, well, back paws, back legs, okay. And they will overlap some, so I'm kind of just planning where I want them, where I want the arms to begin. Okay, I have basic size. That's how I determine basic size. So again, this is why we're drawing first in pencil, because you can kind of plan and estimate where you want things to go as you draw. All right. Now in the negative space of your watercolor paper that I have, you have, um, that is where I'm going to draw the limbs that we will cut out independently and then attach to our pin joint creature. I'm gonna start with my front paw. And again, basic shapes are your friend. See if we can't fit them both in here. Uh, just about so I can thin it. Make them roughly the same size. And then little toes I'm going to draw. And they're not going to be perfectly identical. I don't really want that anyway. Okay. And I'm also going to make a little X where I want my pin to go. Front paw, okay, and I have my paws. All right, 
If you like a little bit more of a tidy drawing, you can clean up with your white eraser the areas that you will definitely not want. So we're gonna do this a little bit backwards, um, how I normally, personally, how I personally do watercolor characters. And that is, I am going to do the watercolor first and then we're gonna ink on top of it. So watercolor is very free expression sort of medium. It allows you to do a lot of things. And I don't want any of this circle showing up. But the thing about watercolor you have to know is that it is transparent, meaning you will be able to see your pencil marks underneath the watercolor, uh, which a lot of the time you don't necessarily want, which is why you draw very lightly so that you can erase all those lines that are unnecessary or not really a part of the drawing, they're just a part of your thinking process. Okay. Like these paws are really dark, so I'm just very lightly sort of brushing this edge of the eraser across my line work. It's not smudging, which is great, because if you hold it very lightly, it shouldn't. Okay. And it will just sort of take off some of the harshness of the line. We have our character penciled. Now it is ready to start painting. So the biggest thing you're going to need is a little glass of water with not a whole lot of water in it, honestly. Not gonna need very much. But I fill it maybe a third or a quarter of the way. You will need your brush and your watercolor packet, which I'm gonna use the scissors to get open. See, scissors are handy. All right. So I'm actually going to keep the plastic top. This is a fun thing you can use if you want to mix colors together and create a totally different color. Put it in here. So I will show you exactly how to do that. I'm painting our pin joint character. And I'm debating whether or not to make this a white rabbit, which I feel partly is like cheating. but. So first thing I'm doing is wetting my palette, just kind of getting an idea of how much water I need to add, so not a whole lot. And as I said before, I'm going to use the plastic lid and what it's called, um, if it had depressions in it, it would be called a pot. So it's a normal tool that a lot of watercolorists will use for mixing specific paints. So for example, I'm dipping into the red and I wanna make pink. So what makes pink is a lot more water than color. More water than pigment, I should say. All right, so I have my brush relatively loaded, which means it has pigment on it enough pigment that it's not dripping, but it's wet. So I'm going to begin painting my nose, cheeks, eyes, inner ear, and legs of my bunny. Cause I want her to be happy bunny.
Now I'm going over with my pens. I have the two pens, two different sizes. One is a 0.5 and one is a much finer tip. 0.5 is your thickest. Now you have a, have a micron or you have a pen tail. Either one, they are both uh, waterproof. So I am going to use the thin one for my whiskers and I'm working in the area that is dried only. Only begin putting your ink to your character when your paint has fully dried. Bunny is now done. Now I'm going to cut this out. All right, so now here is my bunny totally cut out. I can still see the X marks I had put on my rabbit, so I know where I'm going to put my feet. And my right from my left. Here we go. All right, so it's gonna look something like that. And now we're just going to use the brass pins to connect. I'm gonna cut it theoretically. Here we go just with the tip of my scissors and then push it through that way. There we go. It hides any mistakes, again, if you were a little rough with your cutting like I was, it covers it up nicely, no one can tell. All right, so you do that with all four limbs. for following along with me for these uh, projects with the art kit. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, remember, you have this wonderful little pamphlet in the box. It's about becoming a member at UVA. And also do remember that if you uh, hashtag UVA art kits, you can share your projects on Instagram and also by tagging UV Arts uh, by April 30th. You have the chance to win a $10 Dutch Brothers gift card. If you would like to pursue private art lessons, you can book a lesson with me on my website, which is in the link below, and I would love to see you.